But hello everyone and welcome to a, a rather surprising episode. It is surprising because I'm in the Fiesta and I've actually never done an actual driving video in the car apart from the first time I drove it, of which there were many problems. In fact, there was a failure to get to the MOT. Listen to this. 3,000 RPM, plenty of performance. The compression readings on this car were never particularly great, um, even though very equal, which suggests that there's no untoward problems. Um, there will be a lot more work done on this car in the future. I've hinted that uh, with um, a, a few times recently. Um, the only major work to be done on this car is that engine. As you've seen in that first little clip, that's way too much smoke for me. Open up the sunroof a bit more. I'm absolutely boiling today. Ah, dear me. Nothing like a nice sunny day to just drive around. I'm just going to stick the camera here. I'm not going to really move it around much today. I just thought it would be a nice thing to just stick the camera on me as much as the car while driving it. Um, so, yes, I don't think the valve stem seals have done much good at all, really. Uh, well, they have done good because they're the, the modified top hat ones. Um, but we're still getting a bit of uh, oil burning and I don't know where what the culprit is or there might be several culprits um, but what I have identified uh, what I have identified is um, always get a bit nervous when I stop at junctions whether it's going to cut out on me but today no it hasn't cut out on me at all we've got plenty of fuel HT leads have all been replaced it's all good and that's what you want from a classic and it's it's working perfectly fine holding its temperature very nicely very happy um it's all good um but yes i think uh the cylinder head could do with several jobs um i personally think it could do with all new valves it will all be inspected uh my intention is to take the cylinder head off redo all the valves um, probably change the tappets and if you're going to change the tappets you have to change the camshaft you cannot put new tappets on an older camshaft no matter how well the car has been locked after as we witnessed in the sump episode um, I have just checked and there's no leaks coming from the rear main seal or the the area where the sump meets because that is a, a particularly difficult area to get to seal once it's been disturbed and I have no doubts that that sump has never been off since this car was made 35 years ago do forgive the slight wind noise but uh, it is a very warm day the sunroof does give me a little bit of extra air and a little bit of ex exhaust blue smoke smoky sort of smells coming out the back which is always not particularly helpful but um, yes this car has its own re uh, gas recirculation system where the driver can smell its own exhaust gases through the sunroof quite intoxicating I'm just noticing a few people behind me. <laughs> there was two people last time I drove this car who were doing this. Quite hilariously, I've actually got... Um, that's, that's my toolbox. Going up a hill. Go. So smooth through the box. Totally smooth and hovers around 2,000 RPM and exactly as it, the gearbox is supposed to work. There's plenty of power in this thing. And yet for a compression of around 85 per cylinder to 90, that's not very good, is it? But it's got plenty of power. Maybe it's just because of how light this car is. It makes me wonder what's going to happen once I've done all this work, particularly to the cylinder head. And obviously, I did say in a, last, in a previous episode, I'm not going in for all that piston ring rubbish. Who was I kidding? I'm going to learn some lessons here definitely but that will be in the autumn for now i'm going to car shows burning a bit of smoke that's all right no problem i used to uh, uh, classic cars that used to uh burn smoke or, or leak oil my p6 was profound for leaking oil at the front crank oil seal never burnt any that engine never burnt any oil this is the first engine i've owned that properly burns oil uh typical cvh uh, that, that's unfair to be fair because a lot of them that exist today don't really burn much at all because they are extremely well kept or have led very uh, easy lives. I think this one has been definitely looked after but for some reason that hasn't been good enough for this engine. Um, but uh, 
it is always a thing with classic cars they don't really need oil changes they get one continuous oil change throughout the year because you're constantly topping up with fresh oil so you never got dirty oil in the car which is a, a really positive aspect of uh, classic car ownership whereas with cars that tend to um, keep their oil quite nicely people tend to neglect them a bit more because well, it doesn't leak it's not a problem here is it oh, I love this car absolutely love this car it's so fun it's wallowing around the corners you would expect that I think brand new they even did this I think most people say that the suspension at the front is a bit bangy and crashy that is also to be expected because it's quite basic there's nothing really to it there's no anti-roll bar um, there's nothing really that it could be in terms of wear and tear I mean the bottom arms could be changed for newer ones but I, I don't see any reason the bushes don't give any play the ball joints are good so naturally that is probably a characteristic of the suspension on these cars bangy and crashing a bit wallowy but overall very fun cars to drive um, which is quite amazing considering that I don't think Ford spent an awful lot of time thinking about the suspension on this car although the rear twist beam is actually something really to behold um, because it was a much more um, improved version of over what they had on the Mark II Fiesta which was a dead beam axle I can't imagine Mark II Fiestas being particularly good to drive as cars but yeah, each to their own this is the normal life of going round roundabouts in a Mark III you just spend most of your time either on the left hand side or the right hand side you never quite these seats are very very much not supportive unlike the ones you're getting uh, I believe the S the XR 2i as well so uh, yeah and the RS Turbo obviously with Recaro's you're going up a hill now I'm going to try to put it in low range but I don't like putting it in low range because it just doesn't sound it just sounds rough it, 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 the gearbox isn't happy the engine isn't happy I just prefer to just gently smooth myself up the hill but this car around town holds its own it keeps up with traffic absolutely fine because of its size and sheer weight what we're talking about 900 kilograms or something like that that's, that's absolutely nothing it's not even a ton and power to weight is uh, exceptionally good and a few looks here and there yes well I like say yesterday I had a few people waving their <laughs> waving their hands in rather a retrospect but yesterday I had a, a BMW drive right behind me coming well it was miles away and then suddenly he came very close to me as they do to sort of put pressure on you to drive faster as the as they generally do um, but um, as soon as he got close to me he started backing off for some reason I wonder why that was. The surprising thing is though when you pull up and you just press a button and the window comes down and people are looking at you like you're expecting you to they're expecting you to do the windy action and you're not and the window's going down. How is that happening? That's hilarious. I've had that from a few people. Now there is something to be said for a top of the range model from back in the day there's just a few little creature comforts that as a millennial I'm very used to electric windows being one of them um, there isn't really anything other than that really um, the owner didn't really tip the box in terms of the heated windscreen don't have the heated windscreen uh, which don't need it because it's never going to be used in the winter but it's nice to have it fitted um, but it would lead to a bit of a problem if the windscreen was to suddenly develop a crack or a chip and then you're thinking well presumably I'll just get a normal windscreen then and you know you lose a bit of originality with this car you don't need to worry about that really and um, there are a few stone chips I need to attend to though before maybe they start opening up to become a weakness what I really love about this is the, the huge graping back window of this car I mean my interior rear view mirror I can't see a bit of the outer aperture of the window. It, I can only see the actual window in my interior mirror. That's how big it is. Um, I think Austin Maestro's are pretty good for that. There was a lot of cars back in the day that were pretty good for rear visibility, unlike today where it's, it's like looking out of a letterbox, quite frankly. Big, massive windows. I have 
absolutely no confidence. These mirrors, by the way, these big door mirrors are very poor for adjustment. That mirror is far too up, even though I'm moving the lever down. It, it doesn't, I have to kind of look up to see in the corner a little bit. But really, honestly, that's not a problem. Even when doing a motor, a change on a motor, or dual carriage, where you just, you just look over your shoulder. That's what you do. That's what you're told to do during your driving lessons. You look over your shoulder on occasions where the mirror doesn't cover, doesn't cover blind spots. Just look over your shoulder. I don't know why blind spots is such a problem now, or is it just because people can't be bothered to turn their head? Or has everybody got kinked necks where they can't actually move it and just keep it in a straight line? Oh yeah, that's, it's, it's just so nice to drive and so smooth. I mean, there really isn't any revvy sounds. I'm afraid this is not a sporty sort of drive today. Um, this is more of a, a relaxing summer drive. Around the suburban areas, I've managed to get up to 40 at one stage. Um, but we stop. Absolutely nothing, perfectly happy. It's a shame that I'm gonna have to take this engine apart quite a bit. Um, I'm not under any doubts that I'm going to have to take pistons out to change piston rings. Big end bearings are going to have to be disturbed, so I'll probably end up changing them. The main bearings, I don't know, because I'll have to drop the crankshaft, and then there's a point where I'm going to stop. Um, but I think that will be the point where I stop. But it will be um, a, not a partial rebuild, not a full rebuild, but sort of somewhere in between. Um, I may even do a little bit of porting, if people know what that is, where you basically refine, and it's not like performance stuff, it's where you're refining the cylinder head and making sure that there's any bits of crappy cast from the cylinder head have just been smoothed off using a Bertle. Um, that'll be enjoyable, and uh, I can't wait to sort of have the, the cylinder head all stripped down and to be able to do that, before putting valves in and everything, to be able to actually get the cylinder head nicely uh, cleaned up, probably a, a little bit of a skim to be sure, um, that'll be a, a good thing to do. And um, well, we'll see what we're left with. I know I'm gonna have to do a bit of homing at home. No, no pun intended there. Um, you can do a DIY home, it's more of a, a sort of, um, bore cleaning tool than a home. A home, a proper home is done at a machine shop which will cost me an arm and a leg. So maybe it's something I could show at home uh, this winter. Uh, but the videos will be very specific on what little jobs you can do and just little updates here and there. Um, Ruby will be going to some shows very locally. Um, so it's all good and uh, well, I'm going to leave this episode here. Rather, what is a really beautiful drive and a lovely uh, summer's day. Um, but uh, I am definitely going to leave you here with the sound of the CVH. And a puff of blue. <laughs> See you later.